In this tutorial, I'd like to talk to you about how we derive the aggregate demand curve from our ISLM model, and then use that ISLM model to evaluate monetary and fiscal policy and show its impact on aggregate demand. Our ISLM model is a model of aggregate expenditures, and so is our aggregate demand curve. And in many modern approaches to macroeconomics, you might skip over ISLM and jump directly to aggregate demand. But in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to get there. So let's start in equilibrium in our ISLM framework with real GDP equal to Y0 and real interest rate equal to R0. And we are going to imply that the price level is equal to some P0. Our LM curve is derived in the money market. And we assume in the money market that our price level is constant. So we're going to say here's our LM curve with a price level of P0. That is going to give us one real expenditure or real GDP price level pair right here. Now let's increase the price level. So an increase in the price level causes a leftward shift in the LM curve. So if we have a higher price level, let's say here at P1, we're going to have a different LM curve that all else held constant is associated with a higher rate of interest. So here is our new LM curve. And as you can see, our equilibrium real GDP is lower than Y0. Now we don't see the real interest rate in our aggregate demand framework directly. It's indirectly suggested here as price level rises, the real interest rate also rises. That's one of the reasons why we explain that the aggregate demand curve is downward sloping or that there's a negative relationship between price level and the quantity of real expenditures. Similarly, if we were to drop the price level, we would derive a new LM curve to the right of the old one and have a higher level of real GDP and implicitly a lower real interest rate. Okay, so now we have our nice downward sloping aggregate demand curve, part of our aggregate demand and aggregate supply model. We've derived it using our ISLM framework. Now let's use that to explain how aggregate demand changes when we change any of the determinants of the IS curve or any of the determinants of the LM curve other than price level. So here we are in some equilibrium. Here's our real interest rate. Let's start here with our level of real GDP. We'll pick a hypothetical point on our aggregate demand curve and our hypothetical price level P0. So let's change something. Let's engage in expansionary monetary policy. As we learned in a previous video, expansionary monetary policy shifts the LM curve to the right. That should result in a reduction in the real interest rate and an increase in real GDP. Now, if we had got an increase in real GDP, all else held constant, if our price level remained the same, we would have a higher level of real expenditures and our aggregate demand curve shifts to the right. So expansionary monetary policy or increase in the money supply leads to a rightward shift in aggregate demand. Let's try fiscal policy. Fiscal policy or government spending is a determinant of our IS curve. If we have an increase in autonomous government expenditures, we should see a rightward shift in our IS curve. If our IS curve shifts to the right, we have a higher level of real expenditures and a higher real interest rate. We're not going to be able to see that just from our aggregate demand curve. We're only going to see the increase in aggregate demand or our rightward shift. So an increase in government purchases leads to a rightward shift in the IS curve and a rightward shift in aggregate demand. Any change in any of the determinants of IS or LM 
that leads to a higher level of real GDP is going to lead to a rightward shift in our aggregate demand curve. Any change in the determinants of the LM curve or the IS curve that lead to a lower equilibrium real GDP is going to cause a leftward shift in our aggregate demand curve. I hope this video helps you understand a little bit about the relationship between our ISLM framework and aggregate demand. ISLM is a model of aggregate demand.